When we're going to continue our discussion about the trends in the periodic table that's based on understanding the electron configuration of the elements in the periodic table. It turns out that if once we sort of understand the basic way of looking at the periodic table based on electron configuration, which was discussed in the previous video, we can also see that because the electrons and the type of orbitals as well as the protons change in a specific sequence, the elements in the periodic table have predictable patterns that we can match up to experiment. The reason these trends are predictable is because they occur due to the electrostatic interactions. Remember that that means opposite charges attract each other and like charges repel each other. So they have these electrostatic interactions between protons and electrons, specifically those valence electrons. So if we look at the pattern, the major pattern that exists, this in the way that protons and electrons interact with each other, we notice two things. The first thing we notice is that there is an increase in size of the atom. And the reason is because valence shell tends to increase every time we change to a new period. To give you an idea, if we go from period one to period two, period two to period three, three to four, every time we go a new period, remember our n, which is our shell number, goes up one number, right? And the increase in shell is letting us know that now we have electrons further away from the nucleus. So that's the second shell. This is the third shell and so on. So the electrons are further away, so the atoms get bigger. And that's true when you're going from top to bottom in a group. So when you're going down this way, as shown by this arrow, you're going to get larger sizes. And that turns out to have specific effect. The second pattern that we observe is the decrease in size. So things are getting smaller. This happens when the valence shell effectively becomes smaller. So earlier we talked about how the valence shell becomes larger. Now this valence shell effectively becomes smaller. So that happens actually when you're going from left to right. How does that work? Well, when you go from left to right, remember that you're at the same period. So for example, if I'm looking at this period right here, everybody's in period two. So that means that all the electrons are located in this second orbit, right? However, remember that when you go left to right, not only do you get an increase in the number of electrons, Electrons, but you also get an increase in the number of protons in your nucleus. Now, the more protons you have, the stronger those protons are going to attract the electrons in the valence shell. So effectively, what happens is the same electrons are located in this second shell right here. It's going to get pulled in a little bit more compared to when there's fewer protons. And as a result, as you go left to right, you get more protons. Your size gets smaller because those electrons are effectively getting pulled in a lot more than when they're at the start of the period. These two patterns become really important to observe because they affect a lot of other properties, as we'll discuss right now. Now, the first property that we can see that it immediately affects, of course, is size itself. So if you look at the atomic size, you can measure it. You notice that the sizes of atoms tend to increase as you go down the group. And as you go left to right, the sizes get smaller. You can see it here from this picture, which is the actual measurement of the the sizes of these atoms. The second pattern has to do with something we call ionization energy. Ionization energy is the energy that's needed to remove an electron. So you're talking about having an electron that's originally located in some orbit, and you want to pull that electron away from the atom. You're going to take that electron and pull it away. This is what we call ionizing, right? You're trying to ionize your atom to make it into an ion. You can also ionize an ion. You can just pull another electron from an ion. Now, obviously, how easy or how hard to pull that electron depends on how strong the interaction between the electron, which is located here, with the proton that's right in the nucleus. If this is very strong attraction between the two, then it's really hard to pull that electron away. If the attraction is pretty weak, then it's relatively easy to pull that electron away. Well, think about what might impact that attraction. Obviously, one factor is just the distance. How far is the distance between the electron and the proton. If they're close, then it's hard to ionize. And so if they're hard to ionize, the ionization energy, which we give the symbol IE, is going to be high, right? It takes a lot of energy to ionize the electron, the valence electron. However, if the valence electron is far 
away from the nucleus, then it's easy to ionize that valence electron. So we'll say the ionization energy is low. Well, it's easy to explain this pattern because we know earlier that the size of atoms increase as we go from top to bottom. So if the atoms get bigger, right? So here you have this atom right here. And then when you're down here, your atom is this size. Well, obviously for the bigger atom, your valence electron is going to be a lot further out, right? And so that attraction between proton and electron is going to be a lot weaker compared to the valence electron that's located right here. So as a result, we expect ionization energy to decrease when we go from top to bottom, which is the pattern that we actually observe when we measure ionization energy. In contrast, if we go left to right, we know that the size of the atom gets smaller. If the size gets smaller, that means you might start with this size, but then when you get to that point, the size is even smaller. So if it's smaller, then it becomes harder to remove that electron. So we would expect ionization energy to increase as we go from left to right. The last pattern I want to talk about is something called electron affinity. This is sort of the opposite of ionization energy. It's the energy that you tend to get when the atom receives an electron. So how easy is it for an atom with its nucleus and already some electrons there, right, to take a new electron in. So to add a new electron, let's say that red electron right there. Well, that depends a lot on whether that electron is attracted to the nucleus or not, right? The stronger the nucleus is, the more easily that atom can accommodate another electron. If the valence shell is really big, right? If you're comparing, here's your nucleus and then your valence shell is right here, then that's going to be really hard for that new electron to make attractive interaction with your nucleus. The electron is here, that's closer, so it's a little better for that electron to be added to your atom. So similarly, when we look at the trend, we know that going top to bottom, the size gets bigger. So if it gets bigger, that means that electron affinity is going to be weaker and weaker. It gets less tolerated. So electron affinity, which we give the symbol Ea, is going to decrease as we go top to bottom. Vice versa, if we go left to right, since the size of the atom gets smaller, we expect that it gets it's easier and easier to add an electron. So then electron affinity should increase as you go left to right. So I just want to illustrate a couple of examples that you can do to use these patterns that we just described, these trends that we just described. So for example, if somebody asks you which element has a higher ionization energy, let's say Cl or Sb, all we need to do is look at the periodic table to find where Cl, which is right here, and Sb is located. Sb is right here. And we know that ionization energy tends to increase as you go left to right, and it decreases as it goes top to bottom. So it goes up, increase that way and decrease this way. So that means that Cl, which is located on this position, and then Sb, which is located on this position, Cl must be the one that has the higher ionization energy. We can answer other questions. Uh, here's a, another question having to do with decreasing atomic size. So if I just look, for example, at the first two, Sr and Rb, Sr is right here, Rb is right here. So I know that if I go left to right, things get smaller. So Sr R is smaller than RB. Okay, so this is how you can use these patterns to make predictions about what is going to happen to specific elements once you know their location in the periodic table.